What the f California? We're losing another racetrack here in California? This is nuts. Irwindale will join the list of Southern California racetracks to disappear into the developer's dust, joining the likes of Ontario, Riverside, Fontana, Saugus, Ascot, just to name a few. So what the hell's going on? After nearly a quarter of a century, an iconic SoCal racetrack is shutting down. The Irwindale Speedway is set to close in December. Our guest today has a personal connection to some of these tracks. In fact, some of the West of Tulsa team. We have connections to it as well. So we'll take a fantastic insight into the past. We're going to talk about the present and the future. Is the future as grim as it seems? If you love going to a track here in California, there's an alternative to Irwindale, but you may not like it. Welcome to West of Tulsa. I'm C.J. Ward. Our guest today, Jeffrey Willerth, with the Z Club of America and the All Japan Showdown. Thank you. Welcome for, back. You've been here before. I have, and I enjoyed that so much, and I missed you guys, and I'm glad I finally got a chance to come. <laughs> I love it when a guest gets emotional. Yes. <laughs> yes. I thought I could hold it to the end. I can't. Our goal is to make all our guests cry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now we're going to piss them off. So we, get, we lost a racetrack. Oh. What's going on? Let's, let's just start right there. Okay, okay, I'm an angry old man as it is. Oh. And now we're talking about this subject, which really pushes me over the cliff. Race okay. fuel on the fire, right? I I'm yes. really, really, uh, no, I think it's a great subject. I think it needs to be discussed. I think it should be discussed in a much larger uh, venue. Of, you know, get, I mean, the podcast is awesome, but man, this really needs to be, it's, it's a, it's a, it's you, a, you're conundrum, lost for isn't words. It? Yeah. yeah. It, it is. Yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. like, why does this have to happen? You, yeah. Yeah. Why does this happen? And we've talked about this before. I mean, during shows, yeah. but even, bef I mean, even between shows, we just sit around in this room without taping anything. We talk yeah. about what the hell's going on in California. Yeah. yeah. But well, when you yeah. list that list out, it, it makes me realize, oh, yeah, that one. Oh, yeah, that one. Oh, crap, oh, yeah. man. Oh, yeah. uh, like, is there any place to race a car in California left? Yeah, there yeah. were a lot of them we didn't list. Yeah. 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 yeah we could, I mean, all the way from San Diego, all the way up here to the Central Coast. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what, is, what the hell is going on? What is going on? Is it just California? Is it just be, the land has become so valuable that the developers move in and racetracks aren't? profitable who knows what is it yeah that that's what i believe is this is the uh greater function of southern california is that it's all this land it's in demand people want to be here they want to be in their in our weather they want to be in our politics they want to be in our social lives and that's been going on for decades and that just causes growth and growth just causes i got to have a place to live and that place to live is on a piece of land and that piece of land happens to be the the third turn of xyz you know, raceway and and um, and so the developers, um, you know, here's a here's a better way to explain this to you. So, you know, we're here in Ventura, rather agricultural area, and yet we keep seeing the fields being sold because the families have had them forever, and they go, oh, we make this much money every year, it's great, but the developer is offering me like twenty times that amount of money for the land, and they're going to put up another. Costco or whatever it's going to be. So it's like, okay, great. That's development, growth, good for the city. Where are my strawberries coming from? Mm -hmm. What What's the net impact of you now selling your, your farm land to developers? So if you can just take that model and kind of just replace the word farmland with racetrack, that, that's where we're at. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and and to exacerbate everything, you got California that's put a housing mandate in place. Yeah. Yep. So you've got now they're saying you have to build more. Yep. And so you've got developers yeah. out there searching for, <clears throat> for land. I know in Santa Barbara, I mean, there's nothing left, but they're still trying to th find little nooks and crannies where they can yeah. still build something. Yeah. You know? yeah. It well, is crazy. It really. is crazy. And also the, the noise. Like, I think that's a huge yeah. problem. A lot of people, I mean, I know with Fontana, that was one of the complaints were uh, local residents rallying because of noise i love so. it people move in and they go who the hell put a racetrack here <laughs> yeah, yeah right. Right. you know it's been there for like you know 80 years you know yeah. no different than all the people that live close to an airport yeah exactly uh, yeah. planes make so much noise yeah. i have to tell the faa you know right, like, right. why don't you just what, what are you doing yeah. you knew it was there yeah. my, favorite, been <laughs> my favorite in oxnard is like where all the farms are and even in ventura is like when they hear the, they smell the manure and they're like they complain to the city's like you know did you not read when you Signed your mortgage that uh, you know there's a clause for you know you moved into a farm area that yeah. there will be some smells yeah so but well, it, you can move to the inner city for that as well but yeah, yeah that's a whole different topic <laughs> yeah it's not going to stop the Karens from complaining so 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 real estate development is is the largest chunk but what I've come to find is there's a, the second chunk um, 
is mineral rights. So most racetracks were smart enough not to build in developed areas. They were out. You always had to, you know, some of the legacy old ones have been there and the town just grew up around them. But a lot of places are not easy to get to. But someone owns that land and they're willing to lease it out for X periods of time. And then eventually they say, you know what, we need our land back. So let me give you a, a great example of a local one again here in town. You guys know the Jim Hall Kart Racing School yeah. used yeah. to be here, right? Right. <clears throat> and we had that wonderful little racetrack right on the beach. I mean, I used to work for Jim, and it was such a great experience to be out on the track teaching people on a beach, on a really <laughs> Where nice else else really, yeah. I mean, like, yeah. it, could it really get any better? <laughs> I yeah. used to work with Jim Hall. <clears throat> he did all of yeah, their sure. promotional yeah, stuff. Yeah. yeah. So um, if I have my history correct, I, I think that land was owned by Chevron at the time. I, I, I think there's been subsequent uh, change of ownerships. But it's right next to the power station there. And and Jim had a, a lease deal to run the track there. And then eventually that wasn't able to continue. And they made Jim tear it all up and let, put the sand back and, and leave it all there. So that's that's a, that's the first track that I wanted to mention. Is that, like It was right here in our backyards. Yeah. And... Um, while it wasn't necessarily open to the public, it was a racing school and there was a track and all that sort of stuff. And now, yeah. gone, gone. And yeah. that sent him running. He had to try several other places to make it happen. And then sort of the same thing just keeps happening over and over. Because yeah. I'll save that for later. Never mind. I'll, tell you, I'll bring that one up later. <laughs> okay, so the, the, the hot topic, why we started, started uh, or brought up the show um, was Irwindale closing. Right. They're closing at the end of the year. Yep. Um, I think December... In case you haven't heard, yeah, 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 yeah. It's been uh, in all the press, like the mainstream press. This, yeah, week. I mean, we're one of like probably like uh, probably a hundred other people are talking about this right now. Yeah, um, even I think the local uh, CBS did a did a spot on it, um, you know, closing, and you know, even <laughs> the, the anchors were probably were like, well, you know, like they they felt sorry for you, but oh well, we're we're moving on, and I was just like, man, yeah. I mean, I don't know, it. it it's it it is sad because yeah it's, it's something that we're interested in you know and they're replacing it with um, a industrial complex which mm -hmm. I get it Pe you know punk companies need places to you know no one wants to live in our window at least I don't think they do mm -hmm. there's not much <laughs> out there but yeah you know that was a pretty iconic place there was a lot of stuff that happened there you know mm -hmm. from you know NASCAR to drifting to mm -hmm. just car shows. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people, it was a place for a lot of people, especially in LA County to really go to, you know, and I would say that's probably the last in LA Riverside County. I mean, you have Adams and, and I don't know if that's in Inland, in Inland Empire or not, but where's everybody going to go? And they don't want people racing on the streets and doing all this stuff. Okay, cool. Where, yeah. what happened? I mean, when I was younger, I went to Terminal Island, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, down in, down in the port at Long Beach and. It was a great place. It was there for a long time. A lot of old school racers there. We would go race there instead of on the street. And then when that closed, well, what did everybody do? They went back to the street. Yeah. You know. So I yeah. Don't know. And you yeah. start thinking of some of these tracks. I mean, I remember driving past Riverside Raceway all the time. You know. Then all of a sudden, I heard it was closing. Yeah. Then all of a sudden, it was gone. You know, Fontana. You know, now it, it's you know, it's closed, and who knows what the hell's going to happen with Fontana? But I was reading some of the latest articles on that, and. They're still trying. There's a plan in yeah, place oh, that absolutely. they're trying to get that going, but they got to be running into all kinds of regulatory type stuff. I would imagine money's not the problem for NASCAR with, with Fontana. Can't be. You know, I, I would. I agree that you know most all of the times there's uh, politics and regulation and control and government oversight on on all these kinds of deals. I think with Fontana, speculating here that they actually have it a little easier now because they they're downsizing when does that happen right you know that that you've got a, a giant mall and you go well, let, let's, i'll make them all smaller and, all, and we can have more homes there or something like that so i think they're probably not in such a bad situation but my take on but what you would, think they're going to open at some point oh well, absolutely okay all yeah right. and it's going to be this much smaller track because it, you know, uh, you know the article it, that i was reading just last night <clears throat> left there's still a question whether they can pull it off Mm -hmm. So there, yeah. I mean, so I know they've had a plan in place and they've had it in place for a few years, but the question is, is that ever going to happen? Don't know. Yeah. And that even the articles were like, yep. Are they going to be able to pull it off? It's kind of the way it would yeah. end. It's, like, it's going to be like a quarter mile oval, like Martinsville or yeah, something like that. Yeah. It's going to be like some tiny ass oil. 
No. You know, which I guess but is better than nothing, but still, man. <clears throat> it, you yeah. know, I, I think that comes down to money making is all it is, really. And, and, and to be able to put on a smaller event, but just as exciting and pack your stands every night that you, you have an event, I think that's good business. Um, if you're sitting there and you've got this giant indie style, huge place that, yeah, it's really great that twice a year you've got an event that really fills up every seat. That means the rest of the year you were on the edge of not making your money for the event that you put on. Mm -hmm. So yeah. 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 Fontana <clears throat> though too, like if they downsize, I think one of the things that I loved about Fontana was that there was so much going on. There was karting, they did autocross, they did track days, NASCAR stuff. Like it was such a big complex and and it housed so many different options for motorsports um that when they closed it just it took away so many options for so many different people mm -hmm. so that was that was tough like it wasn't like lacr like back in the day where we just went out there for drag racing mm -hmm. so, so you, you think the closure of fontana probably had a bigger impact than the closure of irwindale uh, i mean among the I think they're the street pretty folks, close because Irwindale they, is used yeah. for quite a bit of... <laughs> well, yeah, Irwindale is definitely used. Yeah, because you yeah. had literally every, you yeah. know, drifting, drag, right. um, yeah. you know, NASCAR, you well, know, um, Yeah, karting. and I also think Irwindale's uh, more affordable when it comes yeah. to shows, yeah. whereas Fontana probably <clears throat> might not have been. Right. Um, I don't know for sure, but I, I'm just speculating because there are so many different types of car shows at Irwindale. But I know with Irwindale, the last few years, they've been fighting to keep it open. And yeah. so they probably have just been open to a lot more events the last few years. Yeah. yeah. So. I mean, so I, we talked about this before the show, but I'm going to throw my conspiracy theory into all this because. <laughs> why not? Everybody's. I mean, right I mean, why not? Everybody's got their. their <laughs> so I'll say it. So I feel like, you know, the problem with Irwindale, Fontana. Um, maybe not so much LACR because it closed a long time ago, but I, it was the beginning of the end for me, for me because, or for, and for a lot of people because, it's hard to modify your car in California. You know, there's like a meme going around or like a, a video I saw is like, you can modify your body, but you can't modify your car. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, as absolutely crass as that might sound, yeah. I mean it's kind of true because, um, you they treat you like criminals i think we had oh what's his name uh from zuma uh cars and coffee oh yeah uh, steven yeah. um uh, gold goldfield yeah goldfield he says yeah. the biggest the discriminated group in california are car people and they get treated like criminals and it's just like i, I feel like that's the case so it's hard to modify your car. so if you don't want to modify your car because you want to deal with the hassle um why would you want to go to an event yeah you know you want to go to an event because you're into it you want to do it yourself take your car or be inspired by yeah. you know right. another car and i was like maybe that's why maybe that's why you know i because money will talk right if there's more money in racing than there is in development which obviously is not the case but yeah. if that this is the case then there'd be racetracks everywhere yeah you know oddly enough i know i heard of a track that got resurrected after being abandoned for 10 years in alabama and they're they just opened up a couple weeks ago i'm like man that would never well, happen here. Yeah. That would There's no resurrecting here. here. Right. Well, I mean, if you think about the history, like Jeffrey just alluded to, tracks were put out in the middle of nowhere back when they were originally built. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. Probably because of the noise, because yeah. the land was available and all that. Yeah. We're probably following just the same pattern now that they were 80 years ago. Except everything's built up around the tracks that used to be out in the middle of nowhere. So yeah. you got to yeah. close down the track and right. you got to go move the track to the middle of nowhere again. Mm -hmm. And that sounds like what the pattern we're in. And yeah. California's big enough to where we could do that, but will they allow it is the question, yeah. right? I don't, I don't know. I mean, you got the EPA breathing down every, every tuner's neck. Yeah. You know, it's like, will they allow that to happen? I don't know. I mean, the amount of hmm, emissions coming um, from a racetrack every so often. It doesn't compare to the amount of traffic that we have every single day. Absolutely. Right? What if we convert every race car to electric? Would that change it? Shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> CJ, I'm going to kick you out of the fucking uh, room right now. What, what if that is the answer to our problem? That's not an answer. Uh, no. what, talk about conspiracy theory. Uh, yeah, we could actually start it right here. We'll just convert all of our cars to electric. And then the racetracks will stay. What do you You're think about You're fired. That? <laughs> You're fired, what CJ. Do you think about that? <laughs> and I knew I could get to him. He was like, man. And I own a Tesla. <laughs> no freaking way, man. Do you think that's where we're headed? Do you think 40 years from now we're going to see more I'm electric not headed race that way. cars? I, I, yeah. No, I do think you will see electric race cars um, 
I don't know who. None of my friends will go watch that. But you'll be uh, dead. I'll be dead. I would rather be dead than watch yeah, okay. only electric car racing. It's just not. Jeffrey's yeah. keeping his mouth shut right now. <laughs> but I know. Mom. I can tell by the look on his face. He's like, oh, man, Mom. I'm going to let loose here in a second. Mom, Dad, don't fight it. Really. <laughs> <laughs> <That's the kids. laughs> oh, yeah. boy. Uh, so we did go off on a little bit of a tangent, yeah. I guess. But, all right. We didn't say we were going to talk about that on no, the show. No, we didn't. <clears throat> But I, if anything to get Gabriel. Okay, so, so here's here's my, I, I probably should have saved this to, for the end, but uh, here's my vision. We will have more racing in Los Angeles, and it's going to turn out to be more street racing. It's going to be just like Long Beach. Yeah. There's plenty of roadways that could easily be closed off without a huge inconvenience. There's opportunities for a, a, you know, a, a track format. It won't be a permanent one. It'll be an event kind of thing, and you could just like, you know, uh, just like Long Beach. Oh, like Long Beach Grand Prix. Yeah. You're talking right. about. Right. Okay. You could do this over yeah. and over and over. You NFT, could rubber stamp that everywhere, rent, you know. Yeah. And you can be where you're not necessarily offending the the neighbors or upsetting the cows or whatever the issue is for that particular community. But you could you could set that up, and that could turn out to be the opportunities. But that's to go watch racing. But if you want to participate in it, you want to get on the track. Are you saying that would be open to the public if they were setting up a Long Beach Grand Grand Prix <coughs> Grand Prix style in the streets? That it would be open to anybody for a period of time. Well, that's up to the to the, the racing organization that would yeah. do it. You know, because that's what I mean, we're missing here. I think that's what happens is these tracks are disappearing, and the folks I who like it race no, on the street. Would... No prep on uh, Hollywood Boulevard. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> no prep drag racing on yeah. Hollywood Boulevard. <laughs> wow. So you want to learn a little bit about history? Absolutely. This? Yeah. I got some stuff I'd like yeah, to let's, start Let's get even more, man. Let's okay. get pissed off here. All right. <laughs> this was an interesting little bit I just wanted to throw out as as a um, as a way to 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 say, oh really? Okay. <laughs> uh, 1938, the Hollywood uh, Park horse track opened up, and it ran until 2013. But um, it, it finally closed down because of a master plan uh, for a, a big neighborhood. And the, 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 as I understand it, that didn't really work out. The master plan has, neighborhood. Had, yeah, yeah. The, didn't, after all that. So they, they gave up the horse track for a, for a growth opportunity that didn't grow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's not exactly a booming part of town either. Right. Yeah, I used to work down there. It's, yeah. it's not a booming part of town. No. Oh, here, I thought it was the horses that smelled. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's go way back in time, 1910. From 1910 to 1920, there was a place called the L.A. Motor Drome. So you've heard yeah, of the bicycle drums, yeah, right? Yeah, have yeah, you yeah. ever heard of the cellar? I actually have. You yes, see? Yes. God, you're old. Yes. So, <laughs> I read um, old books. I'm not old. I just read old books. Here's the little <laughs> detail I have about that is that uh, at, at sometimes 100,000 people would go to the event there. That place doesn't look like it could hold 100,000 people. It, it's, um, and that wow. at the time... That equated to one fifth of LA's population was Whoa. going to this event. So it's a See, beautiful look at that. It's my a, it's conspiracy like, theory is holding true. <clears throat> when the population's into racing, there'll be racetracks. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And that, if not my mistaken, you correct me if I'm wrong, that's a wooden racetrack. That's exactly what I was about to tell you. That's okay. all wood and all of that. And so yep. guess what happened to that racetrack? Recycled? <laughs> I don't know. Firewood? No. <laughs> You're absolutely right. Firewood, it, I'm it sure. Was wood, right? yeah. Yeah. And it burned. And the whole facility oh. went down. So oh. that's how that's how one of Southern California's first racetracks that was its demise. Wow! wow. So that's a legit demise. Yeah. You know, I'm like yeah, okay yeah. with that. I was like, oh, right. sad story. I'm I'm upset about that. But what what year did that? To 1910 that? to 1920. What is it? Uh, 1910 to the early 1920s. I didn't have okay. The exact so so that uh, to me that's pretty obvious what it is. The car was a novelty then. Many people had barely seen cars. Correct. It was like horse and buggy horse. Oh, there's a car. It's yeah. like a big deal. Yeah. Right. So to see those things racing. It's just like seeing the biplanes. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's yeah. like, oh, it's, it's a like big deal. It's like a circus deal. show, basically. Exactly. Yeah, like a spectacle. <laughs> exactly. Because when you look at that picture, you can see two-thirds of it as spectator stands. Yeah. I don't yeah. know if you noticed that. It's like, look at that. Almost the whole thing is spectator stands. Yeah. 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 Which right. is pretty crazy. What a great deal, though, man. I would, I know. you know, yeah. get dizzy, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> but that's a lot of fun to race in. Like well, that. it's almost like a velodrome. It's like a bicycle, Olympic yeah. bicycle velodrome. It's just a bigger version for cars, which yeah. is all banked and super fast, and they're like mixing it up and yeah. stuff. I'm sure yeah. it was exciting to watch. Mm-hmm. 
So another one uh, that G whiz predates me, 1940s to 1954, there was the Corel Speedway. You know that one? No, I never that heard one I don't know. I did up. not either. Uh, it, I think I was a little uh, off on the real estate. I, it, 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 is either, it was either Torrance or Gardenia. It's sort of right at that fence mm. where that is. Um, 1940 to 1954, and it was uh, it was a great little track that apparently everybody liked, and uh, and they um, I think the fun thing about that was that it was sports cars. It was a dirt oval, but they were running sports cars, the old MGs mm. and Alfa Romeos and stuff like that. Mm, and they said it was cool. hilarious to see these things bouncing around that were so <laughs> not ready wow. for that sort of activity. Isn't that kind of cool? Early, uh, early rally cross. <laughs> or, oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly what it is. There you go. Well, yeah, it's rally circle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, and so the, another situation that uh, the it, it finally was closed down for development. And it was because they put Artesia Boulevard in there. Oh, Artesia damn. Artesia Boulevard went right through right the third there. turn oh, or something. Wow. Like so yeah, they mean. say Gardena on the brochure you gave us. It says <coughs> Gardena. So, yeah, it's so, like right yeah. there on the border yeah. of like Torrance and Manhattan Beach. There you go. Yeah. Funny, Gardena used to be a big street racing place for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it still is, but. I can see the reminiscing in the eyes. <laughs> <laughs> lots of good, lots of good and bad caught, memories. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, then another interesting one knew nothing about, and I know this area, uh, was called the Paramount Racetrack. And that was on the Paramount Ranch that still exists today. It's still used for movies and productions and all that sort of stuff. This was on their property. They had it. Um, and it was only open for a few years, uh, in the late fifties. And, uh, it's, that was sort of nestled in the Santa Monica mountains, just south of us here, probably in more of the... Um, you know, at the Paramount Ranch. Mm. And uh, the reason these guys closed, now this is another good, legit reason to close one. It was fatalities were out of control. Too oh, many people really? were dying there and they just said, okay, wow. we have to stop doing this. And we know why. So our Hot Rod Legend show, this topic came up. That's you remember? right. That's right. That racetrack, some of the guys on our Legend show <laughs> raced at that track. Yeah. yeah. And they explained why it was so dangerous. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Oh, I remember that now. Yeah. Thank you for, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. I, totally because they spent. changed the direction. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. And when they changed the direction, all of a sudden, all the rails were, became yeah. death. They became like spears. Yeah. yeah. To these oh, guys. wow. Yeah. 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 So if you're yeah. a big enough nerd that that's of great interest to you, the track is still there. There are portions of the track you can still go walk around. And yeah. I, did you? There it is, right there. That's yeah. that's yeah. it. You know. And, right. And so yeah. I thought that was pretty pretty dang cool that that, 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 that could still be. I well, they did shot. like a lot of stunt stuff there too, didn't they? For <clears throat> movies and oh, stuff. Oh, still, that, yeah. yeah. So I can see why there might also be casualties. <laughs> <laughs> Sketchy. Well, no. very very sadly, I don't know if you guys know or have ever been out there, but Paramount Ranch burned to the ground In the about fire. about five years ago yeah. and we were oh, having yeah. our series of fires oh really because oh. every year i go to the topanga banjo fiddle contest out there i like you bluegrass I, I like bluegrass bluegrass is awesome oh, they have i, it I out thought you played the banjo year. i was like Damn. no yeah. no like, i play played a little ditty for us please no i no, love no. the banjo but but <laughs> i <laughs> i will tell you i went out there last year and i took my two little nieces out there and it was incredibly sad because they had all those cool sets and a whole old west town burned yeah. to the ground it oh, doesn't dang. exist uh, all that's left is a church there was like a freestanding church set that's out there, wow. and everything else they're going to rebuild it, supposedly, but it's but taking... it's going to look like new old. It's going to look new old, and yeah. it's, it's taking like 10 years to rebuild. Wow, you know, man. they're raising money and that stuff, sucks. but it's really sad, but yeah. it's beautiful out there, wow. though. So I can imagine having a cool racetrack out there. That yeah. would have been mm. something to see. Absolutely. For sure. It's a beautiful area. It is. The mountains are gorgeous. Mm. Um, okay, so then, in no particular order... Uh, a track I sure liked a lot was the Saga Speedway. <laughs> small, small yeah. track. Yeah, really Very small. Very unassuming <clears throat> and just random. I remember passing by it when I used to live in the Valley, just going through Santa Clarita, and you pass by and like, is that a racetrack? Yeah, yeah. You never and, went, though? Uh, no, no, because well, it was it was closed when, when I would live oh, down there. Okay. And then I, they opened it for like a second, and then they closed it again, and I don't know if it's they still do anything there. I think they do swap meets there or something. Exactly. Like that. yeah. That's what it, it wound up. So after its demise, uh, it, it turned into just the swap meet the place. It's still there. Meet, and yeah. it's currently, what was that detail on that? There was, uh, they're currently, yes, there's a, um, the city of Santa Clarita is working with them right now 
uh, on plans for 316 homes to be in there. Really? Uh, man. Yeah. 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 But it was man. just a flat land, you know, after they... Yeah, I, I know in the last, I don't know, probably 15, maybe 20 years um, since the last time I went through there, um, the on the other side of the uh, river, whatever, I, don't know, mm-hmm. I forgot what road that is. That, um, what road is that there? Anyways, um, there's a massive development there. There's like thousands of homes, new homes o- over there. So I know that if Saugus were at an Everfire, it would piss off everybody on that side. So it makes sense that they... I'm mean, surprised that they hung out this long before they demolished it. But, you know, whatever. Yeah. Nin- 1946 to 1995. So that's a, that's that's a good, good run. That's run. a good yeah. run. That's a real good run. Yeah. That's a really great run. Yeah. And I wanted to... Um, so my per- one of my personal experiences there was I... Uh, wound up befriending. Uh, do you guys remember on KLOS, uh, Uncle Joe Benson? I do. Yeah, Uncle oh, Joe, yeah. sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Joe Benson. See how the young ones don't. Yeah. I they're don't. like, what? they're like, what's, what's KLOS? KLOS? <laughs> right. I know KLOS. I just don't know the name. So. You, you know the bumper sticker is what you know, right? Uh, yes. Most people know the bump- yes. bumper sticker. Yeah. Right, right. So anyway, uh, Joe was not only just a great DJ and a, and a very cool guy, but he loved racing. He, he was he, a car guy, a hardcore. Oh, interesting. You know? I didn't and know that. So, uh, he raced at Saugus mm. and, uh, and, and I would go meet him there and, and, you know, just be with him in the pits and stuff like that. What but kind of car did he have? He had, or race? we had, um, you know, he did two, he also loved to drag race. Oh. So he had a drag racer and he had a, um, I guess it's modified. I don't know what the real class was called for whatever that, you know, the circle tracks. Dirt track. Yeah. Yeah. Was it like a midget? It's a paved track. It's a paved oh, track. Okay. Oh. Asphalt track. And, um. That's where I first started to see when the NASCAR trucks were coming out. Yeah, and they yeah. And those guys there. And then the Spears uh, series ran for a real long time for <laughs> modified stock cars. Would they call it sprint cars? Are those sprint cars like the smaller ones? I, I Or midget, the midget Yeah, cars, there may yeah. have been those that. Those are usually I, on dirt, I, though. Again, uh, oh, are they? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. But you can also have asphalt, yeah. so that's yeah. not an issue. So it was probably there. Anyway, if you ran that many years... You, you got to do a lot of good things, I'm sure. And, mm-hmm. and I, there was a lot of development as, oh, yeah. as technology continued and cars got better. And But the crowd was always, it was just, and it wasn't far. That was the other part. I love that, you know, when you don't have to go terribly far yeah. you know, from where you live to see. Right. So that was a good one. I, I really miss that place a lot. For sure. I think we all have something to say about LACR, the Los Angeles County Raceway. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So I can tell you that... Um, you know, and I always remembered that as being closer too, but it, it was actually Palmdale. Yeah, it was Palmdale, yeah. but it's still. I mean, it was. It wasn't an hour drive yeah. from LA, yeah. so it wasn't that bad at yeah. all. And so, for those yeah. that don't know, it was a quarter mile drag strip. Yep. Uh, mm-hmm. They did have a, a little in the dirt off to the side. They had a um, yeah, like uh, BMX motocross. or motocross, yeah, yeah. Right. That's, that sort of thing. But LACR ran from 1964 to 2007, so that's another yeah. really yeah. really good. That run, was my you know? f- my very first legitimate drag racing. <laughs> Says that LECR, that was and and I love that place. Battle Battle of the Imports. Yeah, Battle of the Imports. Frank Troy uh, started Battle of the Imports. That was that was the beginning of import uh, drag racing. That was before Fast and Furious. Way (laughs) Way before before that. Way before that. It's where I cut my teeth. uh, That in Terminal Island, and it started a lot of like people who are in business today. Their careers started as the hobby at Battle of the Imports. Battle of the Imports was. By yeah, far, yeah. the genesis of import drag racing. I think, yeah. I, if my memory serves me, uh, the first, the original Fast and Furious, they, they filmed there as well. There were scenes in there. I think they did film yeah. some stuff. Oh, sure, okay. I mean, I would, have, I would imagine. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah. And the thing was, is it was uh, you're you're <laughs> like many racetracks around here. You're out in the desert. You know, it was not. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, and so that track was often referred to as the ice rink because just dust would blow in whether you liked it or not. Yep. And you'd be all set up and have your car dialed and hooked. And then, and it was high altitude yeah. too. So it was, yeah. people always had tr- t- uh, <clears throat> trouble tuning their car. So if your car was quick at Palmdale, it was quicker everywhere else mm-hmm. at sea elevation, like Pomona or mm-hmm. Terminal Island. So that yeah. was like, the, that was like the benchmark. If you're fast at LACR, you're fast everywhere. Yeah. So that was the early import, like in this era, that would have been carburetors, right? That was before everything oh, sure. was fuel injected. Uh, no, well, I mean, oh. for the imports, they were all fuel injected, but yeah. like 
I, I went to carburetors because they didn't make <clears throat> individual throttle bodies at the time. Mm. So I, I switched over to carburetors because that was old school, cheap. It was yeah. cheaper to do that. Mm-hmm. It was switch over to a set of Webers and Makunis on your Honda or whatever. And it was some nitrous. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, that NOS era. Yeah. I had NOS on my 240. But a lot of people stuck with the, the fuel injection. But, you know, you have old school racers. Like, you know, you know uh, when Bernie was on the show, you know, he was talking about the old school rotary guys. They were all carbureted. There's still a lot of them are carbureted. So it just depends on who was. But most majority of the cars were fuel injected at the time because they were all imports at the time. But you couldn't really like tweak the fuel injection you unless could. you're playing with the ECU, Yeah, right? of course. Yeah, the people were doing that. I okay. mean, the pe- people were doing all kinds of janky stuff back in the day. I mean, I mean we still are. But, um, <laughs> you know, technology hadn't caught up. But people were hacking and doing things that they could to modify their cars. Um, mm. You know, I think that goes with any generation of drag racers. Back in the 50s, guys were doing all kinds of weird stuff oh, yeah. to see if their car would make more power. So, you know, they were no different. Mm. You know, mm. so, yeah. but yeah, LCR is like, I've, I've got, I got the bug there. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, for yeah. for for competition, mm-hmm. um, um yeah. and for like sanctioned racing, and I always wanted, I wanted them to, to do more, do more with it. I look forward I to know. it every year. I know. You know, th- yeah. you guys are making me think back of you know the imagery of being there and how it was really just a little shithole. You know, there was not a lot yeah. there. Oh, yeah. You know, that was yeah. like the timing tower. It still is. I really don't yeah. remember m- much infrastructure or anything no, there. No, it wasn't. And yet, w- when you think, I was just making parallels in my brain about the way it is today. You know, that there would be great stands and there would mm-hmm. be a nice restaurant you could eat at. Yeah. And you, you know, it's like, oh, all you have to yeah. do is add these little attributes to it. And, they and all of a sudden, the place is like, yeah. you know, it's a, happening. A, a place yeah. to hang. Yeah. 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 I don't you know. think they've even developed there yet. No. It's still mm-hmm. there. It's still there. <laughs> yeah. It's still there. It's it was just... motorcross for a really long time. Dirt, yeah. dirt. St- it was it's just dirt, basically. Now. Yeah. My Nobody dad used to now. race motocross out there. Yeah. Yeah. And it was weird for me to race at LACR and then go race at Pomona. Because they were like completely opposite. Oh, <laughs> Going from like the right. ghetto to a palace. Yeah, basically. It, was, yeah. it was weird. Well, it was that really gets weird. back to the infrastructure. Yeah, you know, exactly. Pomona's got everything you need, really. Yeah, yeah, you know, exactly. It's wonderful, yeah. Wonderful. Um, so let's talk about Riverside. It, it's one that really rips at my heart because it was just one of the great American road risks road race courses yeah. you know it really was so uh in in jeffrey's land <laughs> <laughs> um i was uh, from back east i was working for the skip barber racing school in connecticut and um left that company to come out to california and start working for jim hall um and so this is 1989 i, I get out here they had just had the last nascar race at um, Riverside, and that was it. The track was closed, but they still had a few things that were on the calendar, including Skip Barber had a racing school scheduled for there, uh, a school weekend, I guess that was what it was. So as soon as I got out here, I, because I, I already knew the guys that worked on the West Coast, you know, I, I ran down and I worked with them for the weekend, just helping out in, in it other ways but what i didn't really realize at that moment oh you know what else my battery died (laughs) (laughs) my battery died while i was out there so we get done with the day and everybody's wrapping up and packing out and moving on and i'm trying to get into my little dots and z and it's (laughs) it's not starting i was like oh my god they're gonna find me here in the morning (laughs) it'll be terrible so anyway uh it turned out that that racing school event was was like the last last thing I, I can't swear 100% that there wasn't one more little club event or mm. something like that, but we were, um, so that was just my special, you know, farewell uh, mm. to it. But that, the, the raceway was originally done in 1957, closed in 1989. Um, there was issues because it originally was, was part of Riverside County, but then they created the Moreno Valley and in 1984. So then it kind of like switched. I don't know if that's ownership or just who's in charge and that sort of thing. Um, it was, it was just, and the other thing that was cool for me in my history was that that was one of the first great racetracks that they televised. Riverside mm-hmm. was easy for, yeah. for everybody to watch. You um, could watch those races. It was always on wide world of sports and, yeah. and that sort of stuff. Mm-hmm. So same thing it had, it had different infrastructure. It had, uh, I mean, to, to just, so, and as you saw the picture, I think I've got that for you, Dan, don't you, that you have, um, the, the, uh, do we have the aerial shots? 
It's not loaded. Not sorry. loaded up. Okay, well, we'll put that in we'll there. Put but it in. yeah, that that you can see the aerial shot of what the track w layout was. And now they have superimposed that layout on top of all the homes yeah. that went there. So that it was looked one like of a pretty great... big track. Was it, it, it was. Yeah, it was a was... big track. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I go past it, even go past that area now, and I still look over and think, "Look at all those homes." <clears throat> yeah. I still look at it, and every time I drive by there, I yeah. think, "Wow, look at that. that's where the track used to be." Yeah, yeah. Sad. I don't Indeed. like Riverside. Yeah. The big sign. There was a, the big sign that was right there. I'd there go there for racing, but that's about yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. This is Dan's turn. Let's talk about the uh, Lions drag strip. The na Dan, the non-car guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they, the, the, he 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 understands now that the wheels are actually round. <laughs> he got that part down. He's, he's catching up. To this us. this picture is my era from there. Yeah. When, when I used to go there with my dad and my brother, like that that dragster, I may have seen. I mean that style. That's bad. That's like the medium short wheelbase. It's before they got real long. Yeah. It was loud as hell. I mean, I was little. I was probably eight years old or something, and it that. Spent a lot of time there. Where was Lions? It it's Long Beach. I was a little kid. I don't know where it was. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it, I I I think it's still technically within the town of Long Beach. Okay. okay. Um. So in that in that area there. Um. And it was called Lions Drag Strip because it was actually put on by the Lions organization. That's cool. Sponsor, they sponsored they spo yeah. and they they used it as a fundraiser. Yeah. So they opened up the track so that the community would come, spend money, they would then take that money and they would put it towards charity events that the Lions Club really believed in and pushed for. How cool is that? Yeah. Yeah. Right? They probably yeah. got a few members out of it too. Uh, and yeah. They, yeah. Yeah, they probably grew that. So very very cool. And then another person who really got at the forefront of um, making Lions Dragway a uh, drag strip a, a a known thing was the big name was Mickey Thompson mm. yeah and Mickey Thompson got out there as um, for lack of a better word an ambassador to to just pushing drag racing showing the safety because he was doing he was bending all the rules creating new stuff which became the good rules for all of uh, the racers to follow so uh, anyway he he was legendary in so many ways the Lions started in 1959. And that went all the way to 1972. Mm -hmm. And guess what it was that brought that one to an end? It was noise. Noise, It yeah. was the whiny people that said, yeah, yeah. Doing, yeah, I bought a house next to a drag strip and it's loud. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in and, and the 70s and 80s, where a lot of people moved out to California from the East Coast. That's yeah. right. It was a huge, huge California yeah. boom back then. That's so, correct. So I'm sure the same thing, the housing and the growth thing is probably a huge factor. Well, they probably I, I thought just, they were moving to California yeah. to get away from the noise. Yeah, so. I just Googled it, Wilmington, California. So oh, okay. Wilmington's yeah, yeah, right yeah. out there. Okay. Yeah, right there. Right after like the 710 or something like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so tell us a story. A lion story. Jeez. Uh, well, this this will echo back to something we've talked about in the past. Uh, I can definitely remember being a kid and seeing Shirley Muldowney race there mm. and getting to go meet her in the pits and shake her hand and go, oh, wow, wow. Cool. Shirley, <laughs> Shirley Cha-Cha Muldowney. And she was, I can't remember what car she was driving. It's just too long ago. Mm -hmm. But um, Did you ever see Jungle Pam there? I may have, but it didn't. I, I would think it would have stuck in an uh, eight, yeah, eight or nine. Yeah, it would have. Yeah. It would have been like, Whoa. There's two things I could think that would stick in your head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm just saying. Um, <laughs> I may have. I, I don't remember, okay. honestly. Okay. Maybe you're yeah. too young to remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, your, your dad raced there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. He and what was he racing? He, he used to take us out there. Uh, as, as I recall, I've got a picture of him. I think it was a 55 or 56 black Chevy Bel Air. Ooh, nice. nice. It was definitely an old school hot rod. I yeah. remember that. Nice. And I remember riding it in it. Um, not racing, just riding in yeah. it. It was it was like a, you know, run what you brung type thing. It wasn't like a trailered car with a, you know, insane engine and so on. But it was fast. I remember that. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Mm -hmm. That is cool. Great story for a non-car guy. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see a picture of it. <laughs> yeah. No, I'll bring that in sometime. I'll bring that in sometime. Okay. The little pedal on the right is for what? <laughs> <laughs> Blinkers? Yeah. You're getting there, buddy. Something like that? Eventually. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be like episode 4,000. <laughs> Finally, it'll be like, Bing. we have to retire he's him. A car guy. <laughs> oh, you, now you he guys, he's a car guy. You guys have seen that post, right, where they show the, uh, the brights thing on the floor. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. I don't even know if you guys know what I'm talking about. 
Where did you used to hit brights on a car, like in the 60s, oh, the, the 50s? Little, the, oh, little, yeah. Yeah, the yeah. Little, the yeah. little floor, the oh, little yeah. floor dinger. I don't mm-hmm. know what you call uh-huh. it. It's yeah. like your bright switch. Yeah. So instead yeah. of on the My stock. My Plymouth Fury had yeah. one of those. You know what we're talking yeah. about, Gabe? Have you seen this? Nope. Yeah. If you see an old car, like go, go over to our, our friends. 40s. Go over to our friends and look on the floor to the left of like what would be the clutch pedal. Yeah. Um, and you'll see a little round thing and it's like ka Kachink, that's how you would turn on your brights. Yeah, it's it crazy. Yeah. Oh, I thought that was a parking brake release. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's like a little it's round. It's like a around about that big. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. It's just I, metal. I, I, metal. I, 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 they I, never decorated. I literally thought yeah. that was a parking brake release. <laughs> nope. Yep. Oh, well, there you go. Learn something yeah. new every day. Learn something new every day from the old geezers. Around the same time as curb feelers, right? <laughs> that's right. Yeah, yeah. That people have no I want to bring those back. I, I know, remember right? curb feelers. Yeah. Absolutely. Put that on my Arc 7. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we can incorporate some pyrotechnics in there. Absolutely. So that when it, like, you know, you see the fireworks. Yeah. <laughs> Flames. <laughs> so one of the really uh, more memorable and big places, and I, I, I did get to get there. I was I attended before it closed up was Ascot Park Speedway. Ascot mm. had been legendary. That's the Agajanian family that ran that. And I believe, if I had my history right, remember I, I talked about that Corel Speedway. Um, I think uh, Agajanian was a, a, a involved in that as well. I don't know if he was a part owner or just a promoter. Or Is this on went. the water? So... Uh, no, that's a uh, the L.A. River system. The aqueduct. Oh, where, where was this? Ascot was... Um, Boy, if it's, off the L- if it's off the aqueduct. Look that up for us, Dan. Yeah. Ascot Park. Hey, I forget where that was huh. exactly. It was called... It, oh, I'll tell you what. Here's the, here's the hint. <laughs> Their motto was... Uh, so it was... That's where... I guess in 1958 they started saying... The 110, the 405, and the 91 collide. That's where you go. Oh, damn. <laughs> <Crush. laughs> where, they, where they collide. Yeah. 110, 405, and 91, where That's they all the collide. That's the South Bay, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, huh. exactly. Dang, I didn't know that. So, uh, and, and the demise, uh, so Ascot ran from 1957 to 1990. But it was the same story again where it was a real estate development deal that finally forced the closure and that real estate deal did not come through and didn't happen. Mm. And, and so it, it lost it. But mm. here was the deal. That was uh, ha- half mile. Located near Gardena. Yeah, near it's Gardena. on South Bay. Yeah. yeah. Indiana Street, if you know where that is. I know where I, that is. I know where like that is. Like in L.A., yeah. So um, they just really dominated the um, sprint car uh, programs. And, and, all, and they always had great events. Their turkey nights were off the chart, thousands and thousands and thousands of people would go standing room only to go watch, you know, Turkey Night, the last one of the season and stuff mm. like that. It was such a great place, so important, lasted forever, always filled up. They just they they put on a good show, and then um, in the eighties, ESPN started or late eighties, I guess, is uh, ESPN started covering them, and they were they had their uh, Thursday Night Thunder show that they would they would broadcast live you know from mm-hmm. ascot and stuff like that i mean that was when again, espn was looking for things to air that was different <clears> than everybody they, that's what espn did at the beginning they absolutely were, yeah they were every, every sport that isn't on tv yeah, already absolutely that's yeah. what we do yep. you know i i have a fuzzy memory of being a kid and watching tv and seeing maybe on like ktla like on channel five seeing racing from ascot really yeah cool be- way before espn this probably would have been in the 70s mm-hmm. and so on mm. so yeah uh, now that you bring that up ascot Sticks in the mind. And the park itself became available because it was a city dump. <laughs> <laughs> and, and that's what Agajanian bought, and that's what the, he built the track on, was this old, mm. old city dump. True wow. entrepreneur. Oh, interesting. Mm-hmm. Great mm. stuff. Really cool. Um, and, and a lot of the legendary sprint car drivers and eventually NASCAR drivers, they all got their, you know, clear got their bite you know at, at ascot that's where they mm. you know, so wow <clears throat> that's one of the tracks that just has the name i mean when you hear the name ascot great name, okay. ascot yeah. park yes. yeah, i know yeah. exactly what you're talking about right. yes absolutely yes. Yeah. yeah um so then uh, i know you guys really don't care much about this one but uh let's talk about auto club speedway <laughs> <laughs> 1995 to 2023 it was the Quote, the next gen of California project is what they're closing it down for, the next generation of it. 
and uh, they're doomed. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. You know, uh, it, it's what they're looking for is exactly what we had discussed earlier. It's about a half mile track, just mm-hmm. like Martinsville. Mm-hmm. Nice long straight that you can rev it up, and then you go through a really big um, banked turn on mm-hmm. either end, and and again, you know, I've been to Martinsville. You want to know something about Martinsville? Okay, last time I was on the show, I told you guys about the the deep fried avocados. Yes, yes. 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 Remember that? I remember yep. that? Yep. Yep. Got your attention. The best ones. Okay. okay, let's go to Martinsville sometime. Get the hot dogs. The hot dog comes on the bun. I think it was um, it's, it's, it's cabbage or something that they they chop up real fine and put that on top of there. The hot dog is. You take the bite and you go, oh, wow, that's really a great hot dog. But then you look at it and there's the outer skin that has a color. Then there's this different color in the middle that's the meat. And then for some reason there's like this red dot in the center of... <laughs> it's just, I don't know what that was. Did you ask or just keep eating I, it? Just keep eating it. <laughs> You're at the racetrack, you know. It's like wash it down with a beer. All it's natural. Oh I don't know what it was, my friend, but they were good, and I kept eating them, and that's what you do. So it's that's sure what It's pure nitrate. <laughs> it's just a shaft of pure nitrate. Right? Three shades of food coloring. <laughs> yeah. if, you, uh, if you've been to Martinsville and you have a comment to counter that, you let me know. Got it. <clears throat> Uh, so yeah, that's in construction right now, as you know, they've torn up half of it and, uh, we have an image that will, you know, that shows how they're, there you go. That's what mm-hmm. they're doing. So there's the, there's the track as we all know it. Wow. And the red line is what the new one's going to be. It's just going to be this bull ring that they're just going to, and you can put stands now on both sides of that. And you actually, you can put stands all the way around it. And now you're getting an awful lot of people coming to an event that's smaller, easier to manage, all that sort of stuff. You don't have yeah. to have 20 miles and of it'll cable. Be, it'll be a slower track, so it might be a little bit more safer for other events and stuff like that. Because I know there's a couple of people that have died um, on the infield at um, Auto Club. Uh, not not NASCAR, just like, uh, you know, there's like a couple of Porsche GT, like I think one or two Porsche GTs that crashed there. Because mm. you can get a lot of speed coming out of there. But also, too, that's probably bad drivers, but... Um, you know, uh, a smaller track, I mean, I guess it's okay, you know? Well, here you, let, let's, the option that is currently being used is the Coliseum, you know. Again, Which they've used a few times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So that there's, that that's, that's what you get. And guess what? They fill that place up. Yeah. They're yeah, making their money on that right. one. That's yeah. not, that's a non-issue. Yeah. 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 I, I think it's a pretty crappy venue for NASCAR because it's just, Itty bitty beyond. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like I'd rather see go karts go around there yeah. than yeah. watch NASCAR guys. Sure. Yeah, right. There, but, yeah. Uh, so Auto Club, just we talked about it at the top. Auto yeah. Club is Montana. Yeah. 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 You know, it's it's. I did. I probably did most of my racing there. Well, because I did a lot of autocross there. Like they would host SCCA would host a lot of autocross there. Yeah. And then like I took my daughter for her first autocross there. I took a bunch of my girlfriends for their first autocross there. So. It holds a lot of memories for me. I, I'm and then I had the my first track night in America, which I loved that track. That was so much fun. So yeah, that was that's that's a it's a bummer. It was a bummer for me when it closed. Mm-hmm. I was always excited to go out there. But you know, there probably is a metric uh, about because they they did all these events and they had stuff going on. It was busy all the time. It was yeah. always rented out. Yeah. But if you look at a metric that says you know the amount of revenue per acre or however you want to measure that mm-hmm. you know is that's where the yeah, it's like consolidate right. and we have less property tax that we have to pay and yeah. or this or that or whatever their reasons are yeah. and we can make even more money in a tighter smaller place you know mm-hmm. it's, yeah. It's, yeah and seven stock that was my, my first seven stock was there yeah same here same here and, and then being on the roval in the arc seven was epic and something i will never forget yep <laughs> so. yep i'm gonna go back to my my conspiracy theory <laughs> you are yeah because right. you promote a culture of, around motorsports people will get behind it they won't it's not a noise thing to them it's like oh they're racing again mm-hmm. i should go down there and check it out versus what's that noise yeah i can't watch my youtube or whatever you know yeah. i just well, have double pane windows now <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, I mean, I still I can still kind of hear the uh, the the sprint cars over at Ventura Raceway oh, from right, my yeah. house sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. which I'm like, oh, they're racing. I love again. that. You yeah. know, I do. Yeah. Now, regarding Fontana, I saw the photo, but ha- have they actually started construction? They started. They, it, it's demoing. Deconst- yeah, yeah. yeah. Demo- but they haven't started building it though. I don't believe so because yeah. that, yeah. that's, that's and that's what I yeah. that's what I was reading in the articles that. It, <clears throat> 
there's been a holdup. They had yeah. they were hoping to have their first event the uh, early 2025, mm -hmm. and they've already said that that's not going. Yeah, no, I heard, I heard they're something way off. About that. Yeah, yeah. They're way yeah. Off. so th something's holding it up. Yeah. I would be curious to find I'm out what. I'm gonna that say is. it's probably the city of Fontana. <laughs> yeah, I would. Yeah. I would guess that would be. You know, it. Yeah. in California, the yeah. permits is what hold everything yeah. up. Oh right? yeah, that's what I was saying. Yeah. Yeah. Was like, you didn't grease it? the right palms yet. Yeah. Could, yeah. could be county. Could be city. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, could be EPA. Could be A or B. It could be. That's what we need to do. An EPA sponsored racetrack. That's how we'll get racetracks mm -hmm. in California. What if we just, yeah, good luck. Just yeah. turn it all electric. What do you think about that? Shut <laughs> up. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just poking the bear that's now. He, he a, keeps going back. A fresh <laughs> idea. <laughs> Careful when you poke the bear. You got fangs, man. <laughs> we could just use the F bomb bleep there anytime you he brings up electric. electric. <laughs> bleep, yeah. bleep, bleep. What is he saying? Don't worry about <laughs> it. <laughs> Start a drinking game every time CJ says electric. You got to take a shot. But, but th it, it does stand out among these other speedways that we've been talking about because that's not a case of real estate development uh, that I'm aware of. That's not a case of uh, yeah. political hassle. That's not a case mm, of, Right, because it was know, bought by NASCAR. This is, this is, yeah, right? they yeah. own it. They, they know what they're it, doing, yeah. and they're no dummies. They, yeah. they run very successful operations They know how to make America, money, that's for sure. You know, they've like, done their market analysis they've and done, all, done that. all that. They've done all that yeah. sort of stuff. <clears throat> I mean, it could be cool if it's a smaller, um, like oval. Maybe uh, for drifting, they'll they'll open up for drifting. They'll mm -hmm. do some cool drift events. I'm sure they yeah. will. They've got yeah. to, yeah. yeah. You know, not so much drag racing anymore, but you know, whatever. Yeah. Right. You know, I, I mentioned that I had lived in Connecticut. I lived right at Lime Rock Park. Ooh. Wow. I literally, could walk out my backyard, go down, cross over the little creek there, and I was right at the bottom of the downhill on, at Lime Rock Park. So every day to wake up to engines a outside. Rumble, yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So, you know, it's like I, maybe there's not enough of us in the world <laughs> <laughs> to live around racetracks, maybe. but man, if you get the opportunity to live right next to yeah. a racetrack, absolutely do it. Wow. <laughs> I would love that. That would be a dream. <clears throat> That'd be so cool. All right. That's, While we're, that was about to say, is that the end of your list or no? No, no, I got a couple more. Okay, okay. All right. It, within that same area, we have to talk about Ontario Motor Speedway. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. So th this is 19... Uh, Okay, they started work on it in 1968. They don't open until 1970. And but the process, I'm sorry, I, I maybe the the construction act. The, it was a four year workup to get to the place where they could finally open. Okay, four years, and then it only runs for ten years. So what business person would ever want to do that deal? You yeah. know, where you 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 put in. You know, almost half of your future is invested in just getting your shit together and getting it made, and then the next thing you know, you know, you're you're done. It's like that that could not have been a happy situation for anybody. It's just the one that was right off the ten. But yeah, right off the ten. Right off the ten. Yeah, and it, it it was often referred to as the Indy of the West because yeah. it was essentially the same as Indianapolis, and um, the the. Uh, <laughs> they would call it the big O. I don't know if that's on any of the artwork there. But this was one of the ones that turned out to be, that was another um, mineral rights issue. Mm. Mm. Chevron actually owned that land mm. at the time. And, uh, and they wanted their land back after a period of time. And so I, I don't know the contractual story behind that, but it sounded like a... Yeah, there's, there's the big O on the ticket. Oh, there that's it is. The yeah, logo. Yeah. Mm. There yeah. you go. Thank you. That's 1970. Cool. Yeah. 1970 to 1980 were the 10 years. For Gates that. open at 6 a.m. Look at that. Look at that. It old starts NH rumbling around 6.30 and wake everybody up in the neighborhood. HRA old, old, lo old logo. Yeah, on that. yeah but really it's Ontario, cool. so, you yeah. know, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. It, was the <laughs> it was the country back then. Yeah. <laughs> you got issues. I'm not, a fan of, I'm, I'm not a fan of the IE. <laughs> <laughs> I, got, I, I got chased by a helicopter in, at the Ontario Street Races. <laughs> Gabe's going to alienate our yes. <laughs> Gabe's going to alienate our IE listeners. I, I escaped. Our IE listeners are going to be like, <laughs> yeah, trash like talking the IE. What the hell? <laughs> Although you all open a track again, I will move there. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a little part that I found, uh, you guys can go on because you all know more about this than I do. Uh, let, I want to talk about Irwindale one more time here. Uh, Irwindale, nineteen ninety nine to twenty twenty five. Right, because mm -hmm. it's closing. Is it closing at the first of the year? No, it's closing at the end of. Uh, I think year? the last event is December twenty eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. yeah, so that, so they're yeah. so know. technically it's twenty four. Yeah, yeah. When, end of when it's yeah. ending. Um, and for those that don't know, it's an is an eighth mile 
Roundy Round Track. Mm-hmm. And it's it's just uh, plus a drag strip, plus a drag strip. Yeah, yeah, and just it's just a cool facility that doesn't seem Super to take cool. up much real estate. No, you know? I mean it's, it's a not awful that big, big bang for the buck. Yeah. It's, yeah, this is really when you told me about this, it was crushing. You know, was, yeah. 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 But uh, what I wanted to mention about that was that. Um, that back in 2018, it was set to close. And that was because they had, someone was making a deal for an outlet mall to be there mm-hmm. instead yeah. of the racetrack. I remember hearing about that. Yeah. And somehow, again, that deal fell, fell apart. Through. So, you know, and, and didn't happen. So that's why they were able to sustain for a bit longer. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, they held on as long as they could, I guess. You know? Yeah. So... Right. I I sent Gabe the other day some pictures. One uh, one of my favorite episodes of Malcolm in the Middle is when Hal takes the boys to see stock car races, stock car races, and it's obviously Irwindale. You can totally tell. Yeah. And they show this. They tried to cover up the signage, but I was like, I know that place. (laughs) And and that's like, man, mainstream American comedy, and the dad's taking the sons to the stock car races. Now it's like. No one does yeah. that. Well, I Maybe. mean, if a non-car guy knew it was Irwindale, everybody knew it. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I think I've been to like five or six events just this year at Irwindale. Wow. So it's like in my head, I'm thinking, where's uh, everybody going to go? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's what are we doing? It's very <laughs> well, sad. That's a that's a good question, and we'll get to that. Just um, I got one more. Let, yeah. Me, yeah. let me do this last one here, and I saved this for last because I thought it had a, 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 some great bits to it. So then there was the uh, Carlsbad Raceway. Mm-hmm. Uh, Yep. You remember that one? I've raced there. Mm-hmm. I've raced at Carlsbad. Yep. That was, um, it's a quarter mile drag strip, uh, 1964 to 2004. And they also had a lot of motorcycles. That was a motorcycle track yep. according to yeah. it. So they yep. did a lot of motorcycles. There was a lot of dirt around there. I yeah. raced motocross at Carlsbad when uh, I was you? racing. Yes, okay. I did. Terrific. Um, so the thing that really struck me about the the their legacy is exactly the reason we're having this conversation tonight. It was coined a phrase out there that they said um don't own the property don't own your future and that's what all these scenarios yeah. are somebody yeah. has yeah. leased land built a racetrack and then right. their lease crumbles and yeah. um, end of story Very yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. so yeah. that um may play well into the willow Springs story because willow springs is coming to its end of a legacy uh, that the Huth family ran, mm-hmm. and now it's being turned over to another organization. There's a lot of rumors. We don't know a lot of details yet about what's really going on, but at least that transaction apparently has happened. New owners are taking over. Mm-hmm. Uh, what I have learned is that uh, what uh, uh, on the starting with the day of the deal being closed was that uh, for 18 months the new buyer could not change the schedule. Mm-hmm. So at least everything that had already been pre-booked has to stay that way. Right. Mm-hmm. The 19th, yeah. 19th month, you know, they it's it's their schedule mm-hmm. and how that works out. And I sure hope that that it is some kind of organization that it, whether it's hedge fund guys or whoever they are, you know, that that are making this investment that they're going to they're going to cuz Willow Springs really has the opportunity to be a I don't want to say world class, but certainly a national class oh, yeah, you know, operation. Yeah, sure. You well, know, and you need to have this infrastructure that we talked of. You got to have the great stands. You got to have more restaurants. You got to have more bathrooms. You got to have more parking. You got to have more reasons to come out there. I mean, they have the tracks. They have the balcony. They have the carting, and then there's so much available real estate all yeah. around yeah. there as well. Some of that has been parceled out, and there's individual owners that own a chunk of that 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 place, but for various reasons, they're not able to really develop it fully. So, yeah. um, you know, it, it just, I, I would really like to think that Willow Springs will endure, will last, and hopefully these new guys will. will well, we had some it, encouraging uh, news from a previous guest, right, Dan? Uh, Mar- Martina Kwan yeah. was sitting in your chair, Jeffrey, and she's, uh, I don't know if you know who she is. She's a uh, female race driver. What was the, she's won like two or three big three, titles. Three championships. Three big back championships. Back back. Yep. Yeah, and she's raced all over the world. She's a badass. But Porsche, anyway, she, she and her boyfriend own DK Racing School, which is out at Willow Springs. Mm-hmm. And we, in her show, we did kind of grill her about this a little bit. And she just said, I can't say anything, yeah. but she didn't have a frown on her face. Yeah. So that's a good sign. She yeah. did say the only thing that she gave us was uh, she said that the new owners um, plan to put, you know, 
resources in, in, into in, it, yeah. so they are so they are focused on the racing. So, but she said we will be happy with the outcome whenever it goes public, and it might be public any day now. Or, I've been or, I researched it before before the show. I couldn't find it. Yeah, couldn't find so anything has been no, nothing since well, August yeah. in the press. As soon as news gets out, especially now with Irwin Del Close, yes, and absolutely. this might change their direction. Maybe they want to dump more into it. I heard a rumor, conspiracy theory again, that they want to um, put it put, uh, and this is not from Martinez, from some other random yeah. internet source, you know. So go take it for what it's worth. But uh, they want to turn it into another spring uh, mountain raceway where they have paddocks where you can buy condos or build a condo there and have it your car right out on the track. That would be cool. That would be cool because a big problem for Willow Springs is lodging. Oh, it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. Right. and there's and the options there are very bad. You know. Oh yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah. so that could be a thing there. You know. Um, I also so uh, I have from a human source uh, a rumor that the buyers are not really known for being motorsport guys or having hmm. much connection to this. So there was some. Does that make concern. you nervous a little bit? I mean, look. I don't know anything about them, so I'm not going to pass judgment. But, but if just, they don't, if they the don't have a motorsports background, would that make you nervous? Because that does that mean they're not committed to motorsports as much well, as somebody who is committed to motorsports? That's the thing that the owners, um, the Huth family was looking for. They were looking for particular owners because I'm sure there were a lot of people interested in that facility but they wanted to sell it to the right person because they want to continue they want that legacy yeah, exactly right. so i mean obviously once it's sold they can't do nothing you know the new owners can do whatever they want but hopefully they sold it to somebody they vetted that person or group or whatever that they will put something into it yeah. i mean to me i see it as a potential uh, income opportunity because the housing development Thing there doesn't make sense to me because there's nothing around there yet and Amazon's not moving there Walmart's not moving there anytime soon so it seems to me that if they put something more around that as the hub for that area mm -hmm. as the track now you could build a town around that so maybe you know maybe that's the case I don't know I mean one could hope yeah. but yeah I, I could see racetracks coming up with major sponsors like mm -hmm. Like an Amazon, Amazon mm -hmm. track, you know. Who knows? I, I pulled the ad. I think it was listed for only like <laughs> three point five million or two point five million, which for a whole race facility is like. Why seemed, didn't we? Why didn't we pull our money? Seemed together? like a bargain to me. That's that because we don't have any CJ. In. We can't pull any money. We don't Man, have. You could have sold your RX or whatever it is. And <laughs> here's my wallet. You're definitely What's your this? Tesla. <laughs> yeah. There you go. We look at Jeffrey's into it. I could sell my Corolla and. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so the other thing, uh, I. I be, just being a race guy, that was where I was focused in, in pulling this information together. But I want to acknowledge that um, there are so many motocross, motorsport, uh, you know, biking opportunities for, for motorcycle racing and, and that sort of stuff. And I really don't understand that legacy. I have suspicion that a lot of places get to stay open because they're really, you know, they're, they're dirt paths on a mountain side mm -hmm. or something like that it's yeah. not a big deal and they're able to endure they're not in in the same kind of peril uh that that these racetracks that we've discussed you know are are in but i don't know that history at all and it's possible that you know motorcyclists have the same stories they're like no we used to i, I can tell you yeah. it's it's much worse because i got out of it decades ago when i was a kid and even then it was like oh we can't go there anymore oh we can't go there anymore we can't go to uh, Jawbone Canyon. We can't go to Gorman. We can't go to okay. you know. It, it's it's really bad racing, especially. I mean, just find a place to ride in California is hard enough, but to find a yeah. place to race motocross right. in, in Southern I think California, the insurance oof, alone will kill people from. It's brutal. Track. So is yeah. uh, Glen Helen? Is that like the place to go? Uh, I believe so. I mean, I'm not still into it, but I hear that name a lot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think, I, that's I think Glen the only Glen Helen significant, yeah. and and it's a place that I know has ongoing. Um, so. This brings us to our future, right? Yes. The future of racing in California, right? Yes. And thankfully, we have two people here in house that um, are putting on events. Um, and specifically uh, today, I know we want to talk about the All Japan Showdown that you're putting together with Vara, right? Yeah, Vara, the racing group. Yeah. Um, talk about that because I think uh, that's a big deal. I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, and I'm I know super a lot of people are, and I think more people need to hear about this. And we need more events like that, especially for the import community mm -hmm. in California. So, uh, what's up? So, uh, on March 29 and 30th of 2025, I'll be putting on the third annual um, All Japan Showdown. This is in my partnership with VARA, the Vintage Automobile Racing Association. And uh, it's, you know, we're there on their time and their contract with, with Willow Springs. Uh, this is on the big track, Big Willow. And um, it started 
as I said, three, you know, three years ago, this is going to be the third one. Um, the first one I found out about it, that they were putting on, um, an event that they said, you know, oh, we'll just get all the Japanese race cars together and let them, you know, make a thing out of that. And as soon as I saw that being, you know, the guy that runs Z Club of America, I was like, oh, I'm, I'm all over this. And I contacted him. I said, you know, how can I be a help? You know, and I, I'll sponsor trophies. How about that? You know, they're like, great, great. I pulled that all together in just a couple of days and, and got the trophies made and we were out. The second year comes around and I had a whole whopping 60 days to get prepared <laughs> for because they told me, it was like, oh, you know, in January, they were like, you know, in March, we could do this again if you want to do it. And I was like, oh, absolutely, throw me in. And, uh, but I was smart enough to say, you know, this takes a village to do these kinds of things right. So I partnered with um, four other Z clubs here in Southern California, Group Z, Dotson, uh, West Coast Dotson, um, Empire Z, and uh, the Japanese... Um, Vintage Japanese, vintage, modern, vintage Japanese Motor Union. Union. Yeah. Oh, Savant. Really, he's just got to shorten that up. VJ and you. We all worked together, which was really helpful because then I was able to, you know, uh, have folks that had great ideas, good feedback from their experiences on how to do things, and, and we also just kind of divided and conquered, and at least it was a, a clan that made that come together. So within that 60 days, we were able to go from really nobody showing up on my first year no you know it wasn't it was just me and and the vara racers you know uh, second year we were we brought in uh, about 150 people that showed up and the really 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 cool thing that has cemented my relationship with vara now is that they've got spectators in the stands for their races mm -hmm. no that yeah. hasn't happened. That doesn't happen. Yeah. You know? and that's true for SECA and NASA and stuff like that. There's not typically a lot of spectators going on. So that turned out to be the big plus for me. But I, I wanted to make sure that it wasn't just going to be a Z-oriented event run by Z mm -hmm. guys. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's when we opened up the idea of like, let's try to, there's such an amazing JDM community in Southern California. And there is no one venue for them. JCCS is kind of on the right path. It's, it's probably the closest thing to it, but n certainly no one uh, with the motorsport spin to it. And that's where my broken brain goes. <laughs> so um, that, that's what I started to pull together, is trying to invite all the brands to come together. So um, I proved that we could do that. So for this next year, uh, I'm really trying to raise the stakes big time, and I'm hoping that we have more, like 400 people there, and um, that I'm working with the big Japanese brands. And w so on. it's a two-day event, Saturday and Sunday. The Saturday is really just a giant uh, exhibit. We're not going to call it a car show because we're not going to judge people. On, it's not about that. So it's just a huge exhibit where we'll have all the different JDM participants you know line up and everybody can just share and all that sort of stuff goes on uh, uh, during the uh, vara's lunch break is when we get to go on the track and do a parade lap or parade laps but we also you know everybody lines up and we get the photographers up on these giant ladders and get those really cool shots and everybody mm -hmm. gets to you know have their photo op opportunity and then they all cruise around at 50 miles an hour around the track and it's for some people it is like they don't ever want to race but they always wanted to be on a race track <laughs> you know <laughs> so they really have that great you know, it, it's a lot of fun. And then the day, um, then there's activities and vendors and all kinds of stuff that go on. But then at the end of the day is the All Japan Showdown race, the actual race. And these are uh, cars that are uh, currently or people who have just joined into VARA that they can race their Japanese vehicles on the track in the race. And it really turns out to be just fun and exciting. And again, you've got spectators, so people are actually rooting and paying attention. And it is really, really, really cool. Sunday is the next day, and uh, that is going to be essentially an open track uh, tracking day. So you'll go there. If you're an absolute newbie, you have to do a, a morning class with the VARA folks to make sure that you've been blessed to be mm -hmm. <laughs> safe and out there uh for those who are experienced track drivers then you just go out and it's i think it's 250 dollars to have your day you get four sessions through the day and um th so that's what i'm trying to do is just get this whole jdm community specifically for those who are into motorsports yeah you know it, it, it's as you guys know it's like jccs or something else you, you you go and you you can stroll and stroll and stroll and look at all these amazing cars and wish you had every one of them in your garage 
but I, I'm after the guys who like, I, I really don't care what my car looks like. I want to press the yeah. pedal modulator all the way as far as I can, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. and that sort of thing. I love that. So then the last part of this that uh, is, I'm hoping <laughs> all comes together. It looks like it's happening. It is happening. Um, I want there to be an educational value to this as well, not just a show off. And so uh, that educational value comes from experiences that help to inform us all more about Japanese culture, the Japanese automotive culture. What are those stories from all the, these manufacturers that we all know and love right now? But they all have great histories. Right after World War II, they got busy and they learned their lessons and they started building new stuff. So uh, I'm in communication with an organization called JAMA, the Japanese Automotive Automobile Manufacturers Association, I'm trying to get them to come out and do some presentations because they know th they are the people that sit in Washington to make sure that the Japanese automakers are fairly represented and don't have the you know all the legal stuff and uh so that that will be helpful uh i i have a, a thing going on with the uh japanese american national museum that's here in la uh they have a project i same thing they don't tell me very much about it so i really can't speak but it's a it's a project called cruising j town and i'm not sure if it's a documentary or if it's a presentation documentary or it's a three layer I don't know what it is yet but uh, I found out that they were doing this it's a it's a historical aspect on on cars in in Southern California and and the the Japanese cars so I'm um when I contacted them and said this is what I'm doing they were like oh heck yeah we want to be part of this so I think they're just kind of going through the inner office process right now but that will be helpful I'm gonna have Tyco drums drummers out there for music you know we each mm -hmm. each year we were like you know do you have a dj do you have yeah. just a you know how do you do the sound system how do you do the sound system that it doesn't interfere with the pa mm -hmm. so that the drivers don't miss when they're supposed to be on the grid and stuff like that uh, so i was like okay no 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 i'm a live artist that will in the down moments you know in between each of the race that's the other thing is while you're there on the saturday you get to watch all the vara races you know, and there's so many interesting classes of cars, and they're all so different. And there's something for everyone. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's one of the big board guys or, or guys running around with little Formula Vs or something like that. Is so. This is going on the whole time. You know, it's just <laughs> racing going on. It's it's just going to be a blast. It's going to be huge. Uh, are you are you anticipating a certain size crowd? Is well, it, is it sounds like you're changing the rules. You're adding a lot of stuff. And you know what happened the first year or the second year. So I'm sure you have some kind of number where you're anticipating who, how many people you're going to get. Uh, uh, yeah, it's total speculation at this moment. But, but again, the benefit I have this time around of having six months in advance notice allows me to Prep really find the bright vendors, yeah. be able to put together these other deals. I'm also courting, like you guys are doing with Seven Stock, I'm courting all the manufacturers to say, hey, bring some cool cars out. You know, I don't need your money. I don't mm -hmm. want you to sponsor. Well, yeah, I'd love you to sponsor me, but... You know, it's like just make this presentation happen. Show motorsports as as uh, an option for JDM life. You know that mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. The timing might be interesting too with Irwindale closing. People might look for something. Totally. Um, and people are familiar with Willow Springs that have been to Irwindale. It's, yeah, it's a further trek for people in LA County and stuff. But um, you know. You know, no. I gotta take issue with you, buddy, on that thing. I the people that tell me, oh, I don't want to go all the way out to Willow. It's so far. It's ninety minutes. It's ninety minutes. I can spend ninety minutes just trying to get from here to to LAX. Here's you know? here's the thing that you're not realizing though with that the people that complain about going to Willow. A lot of people can't make it out there because their cars won't make it out well, there. there you go. <laughs> that's just the, that's just the that's reality. Why God yeah. invented horses. Yeah. yeah. So so hey, look, you're preaching to the choir here. But 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 I will say this though. Um, and, and Button Willow is further. Yeah. Button Willow is a two-hour ride. Right. Yeah, most people don't yeah. want to go to Button Willow, though. Yeah. At least, well, they're going to have to. Yeah. yeah. Well, exactly. Well, that, that's my point now is that it's doing your event and doing the events that you do, Christina, are mm -hmm. much more important now because there's one less option, one less convenient option. I mean, Irwinda was convenient for many, many reasons, and there were so many events that went there. Now, where all they going to? Where they all going to go? They're going to go somewhere else. Willow Springs or whatever. So these events are really, really yeah. important. Yeah. You know, so now there's more 
you know, you know, more focus on that. So I think it's good that the timing of your event is going to be good. Yeah, I think so. You know, too. and um, that time of year too. It's, yeah, it's, and March you, is yeah. a great. You're going to be at Seven Stock pr- yeah. promoting the 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 event. The, the event, which is going to be huge because there's a lot of people like myself included that didn't know about it until after it happened last year. You know, so now there's going to be more yeah. awareness. You get it. You know, this is one of those communities that if you don't have involvement, you're not going to get any any traction with yeah. this crowd. You got to have involvement. Yeah. You know, I'm sure Christina knows yeah. that very very well. well. Yeah. Christina is going to is going to be at the event too with her people, and that in my mind, that's part of the education too. I need to know that I'm doing something to help women understand this is something you can do. Right. You don't have to yeah. be the girly yeah. girl anymore. Yeah. Yeah. You, you, are you? Um, are they doing overnight camping? Uh, you know, that ha- has been allowed. I don't do it. Because you know, I know yeah. with Big Willow, there's all that area. Yeah. Uh, and I, didn't, I don't know if that's something that you, you guys could, are offering for you, people to stay overnight. I, I thank you for bringing that up. That's a great thing for me to make sure that there's facility for everybody to do that. Yeah. Is it yeah, RV? since there's no, RV? like, convenient yeah, hotels RV. right RV. there. Well, you I know, know sometimes when we do <laughs> track days at streets... We've had people car. come yeah, out and people park in the parking yeah. lot yeah. Yeah. and right. just stay in their cars, cars. and yeah. stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Just because it's there's not a lot out there to stay overnight. No. Um, people typically go to, like, maybe you'll find an Airbnb in Rosamond or yeah, something, yeah. but they're not great yeah <laughs> and i don't think there's any big hotels no, you really have you to go down palmdale. to yeah, palmdale yeah, or palmdale. Lancaster. Yeah, yeah yeah which is not that far yeah, palmdale's so, like super close so. yeah yeah so, whatever. <laughs> so thank you for letting me spew yeah good luck I, that's I, exciting it's i'm exciting. so excited about thank you. that event because yeah. like i'm a huge jdm fan that's my thing and there's just not a lot of jdm inspired stuff um, and so that I just I'm over the moon about it. I can't especially wait. with can't. racing. That's yes, like exactly. Yeah, yes, right? yes, yes, yeah. exactly. So um, I think this is a great opportunity to ask. Yeah. How it went. You do it. You ask. <laughs> I know it's on your mind. No, I was going to ask the, 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 the question about who's gone the fastest here. Um, oh, that question. Yeah. Uh, we'll, 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 no, wait, wait, wait. We'll save that for the end. We'll save that for the end. We'll save that for the end. So we have have a. I have to ask Christina. Yeah. Christina had her uh, oh, first yes. car speed dating yes. event yes. a couple weeks yes. ago. How did yeah. it go? You know, it went really well. The car show kind of was a bust, but that was mostly because Galpin had their huge car yeah. show yeah. this same time. So a lot of my friends were were there, which is fine. The speed dating was the most important part, but um, yes, it went really well. It We didn't have like a lot of people. I think we had six six people, couples, basically, um, and everybody had a match. So I would say it was successful. And- yeah. yeah, I got to see people, you know, doing their thing and, and I, oh, eavesdropping a lot of their conversations. <laughs> and they're like, yeah. oh, like, these are some really interesting conversations. I, I did hear one guy say something negative about a rotary and I was like, dude, that guy's no good. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to tell your girl, I was like, hey, he no good. Yeah, but, it went really well. Yeah. And it, and the biggest thing was like, everybody's like, oh, we need more time to talk because we had five minutes. And like, I remember I was in a conversation with Eric and because um, I had to fill in for a girl mm-hmm. that dropped out. But um, we were talking about racing and the the timer went off. I think Melissa was doing the timer. Timer went off and Eric and I continued talking and talking and talking. And Melissa's like, excuse me, it's time to like switch. <laughs> so that was pretty funny. But, it's, it's like taking your SATs. <laughs> pencils down. Yeah. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I think next time we'll probably do like eight to ten minutes and hope that everybody's having a decent conversation. Yeah. But All right. Yeah, and there's been dates already since then. Ooh. So, All right. Could you imagine yeah. if somebody gets hitched out of this? How I know. sick would that be? Yeah. So and our, our daughter Katie was there. Yes, she was. And here's the thing: it was perfect, smooth sailing. Yeah. Right up until the parents showed up in a Corvair, <laughs> <laughs> and then it all went to shit. You know, like, yes, yeah. I introduced Katie to one of my friends. I was and, like, Dad, uh, what are you yeah. doing? <laughs> Get out of here! What are you doing, Dad? Oh, yeah, so, yeah she's adorable. Right. I love so, her. So, uh, when's the next one? So, um, okay, so I think what I might be doing is I might be doing a holiday mixer. Closer to the holidays, like That's Christmas time, yeah. where people, it's not a lot of pressure. I, people are kind of freaking out about the whole speed dating thing. Yeah. And, I, and I heard so, that. so a lot of people kind of came and just hung out and didn't like, they kind of want to watch. Um, <laughs> and so I was like, let's like just Gabe. do a mixer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married. I know you wanted to watch though. That's yeah. what, what, what I yeah. found. Oh, yeah, I want to watch. I want to see what, see yeah. what people yeah. got. Right? Yeah. Maybe, maybe it, it 
you got to get rid of the word speed dating. Yeah. Maybe it'd be like investigative dating. Or there something you like there that. You Exploratory. Yeah. 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 Investigative. Yeah. It's yeah. funny. There's a lot of different things. One of my one of my friends was like, let's do like a vouched dating where there you, you have a friend bring a single friend, like a married friend bring a single friend, and you're vouching for your friends. And you're like, that's a great. It's, so it's like I don't a, want to vouch for my. It's friends. like a double date, basically. <laughs> vouch for help. <laughs> if, it, if it goes if it goes south, I don't want to be a part of it. So. No, you yeah. know what it is. You guys need to grow a pair and just sign. Oh, absolutely. Because uh, and no offense, Gary and and James, who were watching from the silence, I was like, dude, you guys could have actually just gone in there and had a good time. I I talked shit to Gary. I was like, Gary, why aren't you? You know, I've been talking to him for a while, trying to get him to sign up, and he's like, well, you know, girls can see my Instagram on my car, my and I'm bro. like, give me a break. Come oh, on, dude, yeah. let's go. <laughs> I will one of these days. Yeah. I will either set him up with someone. Yeah, but I, but I think that's a good idea. Do the mi- do the mixture, everybody. Yeah. There's no pressure. Yeah, you know, exactly. Everybody gets to meet each other, and then you yes. know you see. How yeah, from there. mixer yeah. car show. Yeah, holiday mixer car yeah. show. Maybe but, everybody can decorate their but cars. But my, my, my boys out there, grow a pair, dude. <laughs> yeah. Ask your girl out. I have to agree with that because I'll be honest with you, a lot of our girls these days are the ones that have been asking the men out. That's not right. Or asking them if they're single because these guys are so nervous. I'm like, stop being so nervous. Uh, <laughs> come on, grow a pair, fellas. Let's go. All right. Well, yes. Okay. So, that right. And that leads into how fast. I guess they kind of go hand in hand. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. So. Well. You, you go ahead. You shut up. I know. I, I, I didn't even know we were going to talk about this today. I no, guess. we're going to talk about it because I. Uh, you, uh, how could you not? Yeah. Okay. What's the fastest you ever been on or off the track? I'll let you go first, oh, Jeffrey. I, 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 race cars don't have speedometers, so I really don't have the ability to answer that question at all. All right. Well, this is I would, if I was just ballparking, I'd I'm probably in the one fifty. One fifty. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so well, that just shows that, that, that if you know what your speed is, you're doing it illegally because you're doing it in the streetcar. <laughs> yeah. How about you, Christina? Uh, unfortunately, I've gone faster illegally than I have on the Same track. Here, so. I would say, uh, actually, I just raced a kid in Mexico. I was going about <laughs> 130 max on the freeway. Uh, in Mexico. Ooh. In Mexico. It's, a, it's probably the fastest because I think even at the track, I've the fastest I've been was maybe 110, 115 mm-hmm. at the most. Because mm-hmm. I haven't hit, I haven't even done Big Willow where you get most speed. I've yeah. done like streets in yeah. Montana. You don't go that fast. So, yeah. How about you, Dan? Uh, for me, it's when I was a car salesman in the 80s mm-hmm. at a BMW dealership. Oh, this is good. Uh, I, we <laughs> talked about this a long time ago, but uh, I did 155 in a BMW M5. Wow! Um, and that was pretty terrifying, actually. <laughs> yeah, like 125 on a on a frontage road, no less. Oh, yeah. a front- and the frontage Ooh. road is still there. It's wow. like out by the airport wow. in Camarillo. But uh, man, but yeah, one 155 in a black M5. Wow. It would have been like an 87, 88 M5. Maybe. Oh, pretty good. Okay. Yeah. I, was, okay. I wasn't expecting that. I've Personally, I've done 147 in an S2000 with the top down, which was scary. Oh, jeez. Oh. That's noisy. Wow. That oh, was really, really dumb. No helmet, I'm guessing. No. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> no, it's hard to wear a helmet on the 101. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> uh, and I've done, I have I did 160 in an RX-7 with my buddy driving. Uh, that was pretty sketchy. Yeah. Um, was but, that on the street? Uh, it was on A Street, okay, somewhere remotely in Mexico. Uh, it was on the five, <laughs> yeah. okay. going coming back from San Francisco. That was, uh, but that's what got me in, uh, in love with the uh, RX Seven back because at one sixty it was sketchy and it took a long time to slow down. But um, at one sixty it handled. It was amazing. It, actually, now that you say that, if I thought we were just talking about driving, uh, uh, driving, but like I was in a car going one sixty, yeah. Uh, with a professional driver. So. Yeah. yeah, I wasn't with a professional driver, but unfortunately we went 160. But um, I, I'm sure CJ can top that. He's going to yeah. slam us. He's going to slam us. Uh, What's the fastest you've gone, CJ? So the fastest I've gone, not in a car, obviously, but oh, you just killed edge it. of Mach, 740 whatever that's miles an hour. Well, yeah. It was amazing. an FA-18 crazy. Hornet. Wow. Blue, Blue Angels jet. Wow. Oh, nice. Yeah, nice. Something about that speed when you uh, when you get to the edge of Mach, there's a there's like a second where you, the, 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 the jet starts doing this. Oh, it's going to break apart. Oh, geez. and then it all of a sudden feels. Those like, are all my cars at 100. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I know that feeling. I don't yeah. have to go Mach and go 100 in my 740 some 40 SX. Yeah. I, I think CJ could say out of non 
combat pilots, he's probably in a very, very select group. Like not very many people have gone that fast that aren't combat pilots. Sure. I would yeah. say. Yeah, so you're you're probably in a few thousand in the whole yeah, world and all awesome. of history. But we went that from fast. Lemoore Air Station, which is near Fresno, mm-hmm. to the ocean. I would have to say in less maybe five minutes. Jeez. Wow. Yeah. That's all of a sudden you're crazy. looking looking over the ocean. Like, That's Whoa. crazy. Yeah, so cool. that is. What I know where Lemoore is. That's pretty far inland too. It is. Yeah, right, yeah. Fresno. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. But as the crow flies, and when you're an FA-18 Hornet. Like piece of bam. cake yeah. 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 yeah i want to see this footage yeah. and, but as a as, <laughs> put it together. as a racer the part that intrigues me is it's not the speed it's the g's that you were putting yeah. oh yeah, yeah. That, that's that's what really 7.4 g's wow and it feels like a car is on your head yeah. wow and you're you gotta breathe does your face look like a pancake or just... <laughs> well here's the thing i don't know what my face looked like as i had the helmet on with, yeah, the, yeah. with the kind of the mirrored Shield, yeah, yeah. So I couldn't see in the video. You can see at one point when we pulled the the seven point four Gs, and I wasn't breathing right. You could start to see my head do this. Oh, uh-huh. oh yeah, yeah. And I had pinhole vision. I mean, yeah. I was, wow. And then I just remember the pilot yelling, "Breathe right." Okay. So yeah. I went, and wow. wow. I mean, it literally came back like that. Wow. Like in a split second. And you didn't hurl either. Didn't hurl. Wow. wow. It's pretty no, impressive. And, I, and he actually said, he goes, you know, after the first 10 minutes, he goes, you're handling this really well. And I said, I'm having a freaking blast here. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why we stayed up for almost an hour. And he even let me fly the thing. So, yeah. You've flown what? an F-18 yeah. Hornet. Yeah. Flew the F-18 Wow. That's so that's rad. That's crazy. And you're not that. a pilot. I'm not no. a pilot. No. You don't I have, have your pilot's an airplane. license. I have small planes. But, but you don't have your like license, though. No. Mm. Okay. How exciting. That's impressive. Yeah. yeah. Very impressive, CJ. Yeah, yeah. you top all of us. Yeah. Well, the negative Gs. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Did you have a need for speed? Oh, <laughs> God. All right. <laughs> yeah. I did, actually. Yeah. We've expired now. <laughs> <laughs> the expiration date the is here. Top Gun quotes. We're done. <laughs> so let's was this stop. before or after Top Gun came out? Uh, this would have been after Top Gun. So this did you did been... you have some of those lines in your mind as you were flying up there? <laughs> no, I actually no. did not. No, no, actually, no Top Gun. Uh, okay. so he, like, oh, he's shit. a non-car guy, kept... non-aviation yeah. guy. Yeah. 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 Right. Probably boats or offices yeah. in this terror. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mule train, that's Dan. <laughs> yeah, you got it. Borax, baby. 20, ac- 20 mules. 20 mules. Yeah. 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 Uh, now, was it, it, I would put it up there top experiences of a lifetime yeah, that's amazing that, yeah. absolutely that's that's so special yeah, that's that like amazing. no one gets to do that no, no. that's no. like even even presidents and stuff don't get to do that that's amazing yeah, that's cool yeah something about pulling negative g's at 700 miles an hour it was probably about 650 miles an hour that was probably the most bizarre feeling mm-hmm. yeah you floated just yeah it's like the vomit comment that plane that they mm-hmm. put put them up in mm-hmm. that you're in negative negative g's yeah, and yeah, you get yeah. to float around yeah, and yeah. stuff that's cool. Luckily, I had a pilot that could fix it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. He got us. He got us back straight and level again, and got to pull it off. Impressive. So, yeah. All right, eighty-six minutes, CJ. We got to end this thing. All right. <laughs> wow. Well, thank you, everybody. Jeffrey, thanks for coming back. Thank Good you. luck with the show. We're going to be out there. Oh, great. I yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. Huge. That would be wonderful. Hey, Christina. Yes. Yes. Thanks for coming out again. And yeah. Co-hosting. With yeah. Us tonight. Super excited. And the update on the on the speed dating. Yeah. Whatever you can end up calling it. Yeah. Pretty, pretty interesting. Yeah. Dan. <laughs> Gabe, Mm -hmm. don't forget to like, (laughs) follow, subscribe. We have our YouTube channel. Thank you. It's been a while since we've done that, huh? (laughs) And I think he still hates the hell out of it. I do. He finds it annoying. You can. Good thing no one listens to the end of the show. They won't hear all. No, no. That's that's why we're doing it at the end of the show. All right. Don't forget we have our website too, westatulsa.com. We have our what's tip line page. We're still calling it that. Okay. Yep. Yeah. If you have an idea, contact us. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Thanks for watching. We will see you. West of Tulsa.